and welcome to Beauty in the Biz, where we talk about the business and marketing side of plastic surgery. I'm your host, Catherine Maley, author of Your Aesthetic Practice, What Your Patients Are Saying, as well as consultant to plastic surgeons to get them more patients and more profits. Now, today's special guest is Stanley Okoro, MD. He's a board-certified plastic and reconstructive surgeon running an uber-successful practice in uh, private practice in Marietta, Georgia. Now, Dr. Okoro is originally from Nigeria, and we're going to talk more about that. And he got his start by completing a five-year surgical training program at Emory University in Atlanta. And then he joined the U.S. Navy for four years, where he achieved the rank of commander and served as chief of plastic and reconstructive surgery at our President's Hospital in Bethesda, Maryland. Now, he's a published author who's received multiple awards, authored many topics in plastic surgery journals. He's a popular speaker at plastic surgery conferences all over the world, and that's where I see him the most. And he's been featured in national and international media outlets. Now, Dr. Okoro is also a community leader and a philanthropist. Now, he serves as medical director of Georgia Plastic Foundation, and he's executive director of Emo Medical Mission, providing medical and surgical services in Nigeria. Dr. Okoro, welcome to Beauty in the Biz. Thank you very much, Catherine. Thank you for everything you do for our um, industry. Absolutely. Now, I have to ask, how did you get from Nigeria to Georgia? I didn't swim. I didn't swim. (laughs) but long story, I, I, um, my, my parents wanted me to come, uh, get an American education. So I finished high school at age 16. Oh. Um, so I started college at age 16 in Washington, D.C. My, my, my dad literally flew me over here and enrolled me in school in um, University of the District of Columbia in Washington, D.C. So I, that, I started my life in the DC area. So that, that's like my first home. And then um, um, one thing led to another and I ended up at um, Harry Medical College. That's where I went to medical school in Nashville, Tennessee. And from Nashville, um, I did very well. And um, I went to Emory University for my general surgery residency where I did four years of, or five years of, of uh, brutal training, which was good for me at the end. Um, from there, I was rec- recruited by the U.S. Navy, where, um, to make a long story short, I served 12 years. Within those 12 years, I did my plastic surgery training at um, the UT Health Sciences Center in San Antonio, Texas. That's where I did my plastic surgery training. Uh, I was both certified in both general surgery and plastic surgery, and after uh, do my um, my services in the Navy. I came back to Atlanta, Georgia in 2010. So that's how I came to Georgia. And then did you leave the Navy and go straight into your own private practice? Yes. Yeah, so um, I, le- I left the Navy in 2010. If you remember what something happened in 2008, 2009, 2010. So I was right in the middle of the recession uh, I was looking for a job in Georgia because I did my general surgery here. So I was, you know, we had friends and family here. I wanted to come back here, but nobody was hiring during the recession in, in 08, 09, 2010. So, and uh, I was forced to open my own practice. Didn't want to run a practice. I knew it was a lot of work to on the business end of the medicine, but um, we had to do it because I had to put food on the table. So that's what we had to do. And so did you, the building you're in now is gorgeous. Did you start out in that building or did you have to grow into that building? Well, we did not have, we had to grow into that building. So we started, uh, it was humble beginnings. Um, we started in a 1800 square foot office uh, where I rented an office from my landlord who was a neurosurgeon, very nice guy. Um, he actually do, his building was empty for four years during that recession. So when I came to him, I was uh, like a blessing to him. So he said, uh, I said, um, uh, can we use it? I don't have any money, but I promise I will pay you as soon as I start making money. He said, okay, you can take it for six months. So he didn't charge me any rent for six months. I said, I'm going to make it look good. And I did. We painted the whole thing. 
my wife, my wife and I started the whole thing. And then um, after two years there, the practice grew um, from just taking care of people. And that's when we moved into the, uh, the, uh, the building where we're in uh, 2012. Nice building, by the way. Um, so you mentioned your wife, and she's been a really intricate part of your success. Um, what's it like working with your wife? And then on top of that, now some of your kids, you have four children, actually. actually. I do, yeah. Or I met one girl. Is are, Have the others joined suit, and, and they're in the practice as well? No. Um, I've, be, I've, been, I've been trying to get them to go into medicine, but um, they're kind of around... I, I don't know what I did, but maybe they didn't like how hard we work. Right. Uh, none of them are in medicine, um, but the one you met in my practice, my first daughter, um, Adobe, but she's still there. She's having Aggie. Aggie um, runs the practice. Um, I, I think I work for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so she, she's, been, yeah, she, she's been at the beginning. She runs the whole thing. Um, she manages the whole thing. I just do surgery. You know, and that's every surgeon's dream to be in the surgical suite and have the business run itself. And yeah, you have that luxury. Most don't. Um, sometimes you have the wife in there, but she doesn't know how to run a practice or that she doesn't true. know how to manage staff. Um, you happen to have a wife who understands the business side of plastic surgery. So um, consider yourself really lucky because that's a tough one. And then sometimes it's hard to work with staff, with family, you know? Have yeah, you it's, it's tough to work with family. Uh, but I, I think, we, like you said, we are definitely blessed. Um, she understands business. Mm -hmm. um, and we, she keeps it very strictly business. So, um, I, you know, I overlook everything and direct uh, most of the stuff. Um, I was born into a business family, so that helped as well. I'm the first to be in medicine in my family. Everybody in my family are into business. My father is a lawyer. My brother is into business. So my mom owned the supermarket when I was growing up. And so business comes to, comes to me naturally. Um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in this practice has been definitely very helpful. And you didn't grow up with medicine. So how, did you have some unique experience as a kid and said, oh my God, I want to do what he just did when he put my ear back together. Was it that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. It was, um, um, I didn't know you were going to talk about that, but. Um, I, I guess. <laughs> yeah, my, my, my mom um, who passed last year um, oh, was, uh, it's okay. She, she lived a good life. Um, we celebrate her life. Um, she was sick at, at, a, at an earlier age. So, I mean, she received a lot of good care in Nigeria and I really adore those doctors. I want to be like them, you know, they, were, they impressed me so much. And then when I was young, um, I had my appendix removed and um, I knew going through that process as well. So that I think having my appendix removed sealed the deal for me that I want to be a surgeon. That, so at, at an earlier age, at be, uh, age 15, 16, I said, I want to be a surgeon to do those kind of things. It, they were awesome, so very impressive. So I, I kept the dream alive. Nice. Now, do you still do reconstructive surgery or are you basically now 100% cosmetic? Um, reconstructive surgery is what brought me into plastic surgery to start with. I was a general surgeon and um, doing mastectomy and then refining my, refine my patients to plastic surgeons to, for reconstruction. That's how I started my career. That's what drove me into plastic surgery. However, um, as you, you've been to my office and the practice kind of have grown and um, the referral pattern in, in Georgia is kind of funny. Um, I came back to Georgia, just wanted to do reconstruction and I did, I did that, but it wasn't enough to support my practice. So the uh, aesthetic part of the practice has taken over the reconstruct reconstructive part of it. We still offer those, but for me, um, it's gotten to the point where I, I basically do 99% um, aesthetic practice now. Um, I still take care of my reconstructed patients that I, I don't abandon any patients. And, um, and that's what I do. So it's mostly aesthetics, but I don't feel bad because I still provide a lot of reconstructive surgery overseas when I travel. 
So when, and I still participate in multiple medical missions where I act as a general surgeon or a plastic surgeon. So I do tons of reconstructive surgery every year. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you brought on another plastic surgeon and I believe you're actually looking to grow more and bring on more. You brought on a couple extenders as well because a surgeon quickly learns that all arrows point to the surgeon and that's got to be exhausting when you are the revenue generator and so you were smart enough to bring somebody on any tips or tricks on how you bring someone on and i know you're looking for somebody else what are you looking for so we um just like you said i mean the practice has grown and it continues to grow today uh, as we speak right now my next surgery date, available date, is next year, July right. and August of next year, close to a year. That's yeah. crazy. Aesthetic patients want their services now, okay? So it, we have a capacity problem. So uh, we, I noticed this a few years ago, so we brought, a, brought on a, a partner, um, the Dr. Park, who is excellent, doing, doing a good job, but he's also getting booked up because they People love the practice. So we are in the process of uh, recruiting another plastic surgeon to join us. Um, it's just a capacity problem and it's a great place to work. And when the patients come there, they love it. And they, they've seen of, I'm, I'm singing to the choir here. They, you know, re refer word of mouth and all kinds of stuff and uh, social media. Um, so that's where we are. Um, we are growing. I'm not retiring anytime soon, but I can't, take care of everybody myself. Plus, right. we need the help. We have great peers and nurses, medical assistants, and patient care coordinators. And um, they do, a, I mean, the, the success of the practice um, is a testament to what they do. So I, th I think the growth of the practice is a team effort. When you bring another surgeon on, um, because I get asked this a lot. How do you introduce them to the practice? Are they first an associate or do they just um, eat what they kill? Or like, how do you do that? And then when do they become a partner with actual equity in the practice? That's a very good, good question. So for us, we keep it very open. Um, we, uh, so it depends on where the surgeon is coming from. New graduates usually would like a, um, a salary guarantee for about two years because you know you just finished school you don't have a whole lot of money and you want somebody to help you we have um we have that capacity to support the surgeon that way so they come on as an employee uh, if they want to so we have so many options so if you want to come and come on as an employee you have a salary guarantee for two years within two years we want to ramp you up and so you can grow your practice ultimately i want everybody to be the determinant of their own destiny. That's what I want. I want you to be able to eat what you kill, support you, pull your own weight. So um, after four years, so two years as, as an employee, hopefully two years uh, where if you want to stay as an employee, that's fine as well. If you want to eat what you kill, that's fine. But after four years, uh, you are eligible for partnership. And then you, you can buy into the practice. So that's ours. But if you want to come on and eat what you kill, uh, that's going to be tough for a new grad, as you know, unless they have um, patients already, which is not going to happen the first year. So the practice has to sort of support the person. But we are, we are open to supporting people in different ways. That's what, that's what we do. No, that's great. Um, I have you had any mishaps? Have you, uh, you know any tips on who you might have brought on that you shouldn't have, or any any strategies there for choosing the right people? Yeah, that is a tough one. Um, I've had um, some a mishap in the in the past. Everybody um, does. Yeah, that's called experience, right? You learn you learn from your experience and your mistakes, and we all make mistakes. So. Actually, your mistakes are what makes you strong. Yep. You know, there's a saying they say, what that which does not kill you only makes you stronger. Yep. It is true. When it comes to practice, that's true. So I think um, the key in for me is um, honesty, transparency, 
um, and just being a nice person. Um, you, for us, I look for people who are good people first. Okay, you can look for a good surgeon. You can't build personality, but if you, even if you have a good personality, you still gotta be a good surgeon. So you want good personality and a good surgeon. If you can get those mix, then you you're good. If you get good surgeon and bad personality, you have a problem. And um, sometimes young people don't know what it takes to run a business and they come out that they want to make so much X amount of dollars. I'm like, oh, how are you going to waste that? There's no money to at the back at the, at, the, at the back office. You have to actually do surgery to generate these funds and this revenue. So some people don't understand that it takes years to, um, to command that kind of revenue. Now there's, you know, it's, 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 it's hard work. But it's not easy to bring a part. When you get, bring somebody to your practice, you're really marrying the person. And uh, marriage is tough. Partnership is tough. So uh, it, you want somebody that has patient understanding and uh, being honest is, I think, is the best uh, solution to this. Um, just a little tip on my side that I, just from my own experience, make sure the wife is on board as well. Um, have the wife meet um, your wife and your practice and and did they come from there because too often the wife is following the doctor's dream and he doesn't mind moving across country she minds a lot because she's leaving her family behind so I would just say um, the wife is very very important in this equation because we can't have the doctor happy and the wife unhappy it's not yeah happy. all the husbands because <laughs> sometimes you're getting a female a female plastic surgeon and the, and the, 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 the husband. So it's a very good advice. Um, the wife and the husband, uh, they have to be on board. It's a or team effort, actually. It really is a team, team effort. But I, I think um, we, you know, you can't say you figured it out because you don't know what's coming next, right? But I think the formula that we have right now is working for us. Mm -hmm. um, we hope to grow to... The practice, Georgia Plastic is really beautiful, like four plastic surgeons. That's, that's, oh. that's the goal. So right now we have two of us, we're halfway there uh, by, you know, hopefully by luck and grace of God, we will get to number three next year or sooner. And then um, we'll see about number four and then there will be full to capacity. And then we may have to build additional locations, who knows? Right. So mm -hmm. you would you would scale you would go can you build out at all because you have a beautiful property there can you build out? Um, we were actually talking about it the other day. Is the the uh, county where we are has a limitation on how high you can go, but we, we will have to move, implode the building, and um, build. We can, but it's gonna cost a lot of money. Okay, <laughs> and that is something you have plenty of. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, I know you're very focused on surgical, but what are your feelings about non-surgical and catching that patient where they are so they stay put? You know, they can either go up the ladder, uh, you know, to surgery from non-surgical, or they can start with surgery and work their way down the ladder to non-surgical. What's your feeling about that patient for life kind of thing and meeting the patients wherever they might be? I can tell you, to be successful in this industry, you really have to see the patient as a life patient, okay? Non-surgical is where it's at. A surgeon that does not have a non-surgical practice is, has a practice that's going out of business. I, I'm gonna come out of link to say that. I agree. So non-surgical practice is the future of plastic surgery, literally. And we do have a medical spa just for that purpose. The reason is you can have a patient that come in, comes in for a mommy makeover. Can we talk maybe a breast, lift, breast implant, right? Let's say she's a 40, 50 years old, right? Now, she still has, if somebody wants their tummy to look good, believe me, they want their neck and their face to look good too. And if you don't offer that service, they're gonna to go to somebody that does. You wanna keep them in-house. You wanna, so our, our strategy at Georgia Plastic is a one-stop shop. Right. We do your tummy talk, we put you where you get your neuromodulators, your fillers, your laser hair removals, 
your M sculpt, your smooth shapes, all that stuff. So my spa, I should say our spa, mm -hmm. how, does a great job meeting the needs of those patients and non-surgical services that they need until they're ready for the next one. So you do a breast lift and tummy tuck at age 40. At age 50, given the history of this country, obesity is rampant, people are getting big. Look at what happened to COVID, right? right. So they look at their tummy and now they see their thighs are getting big or their back. They want to come back, but it doesn't happen overnight. So definitely a full circle. We do have, so there's this thing in a practice we, we call the, the Georgia Plastic Ecosystem. Oh. It's the ecosystem um, or the aesthetic ecosystem. I'm going to be speaking about that next year when we start going um, I, I, to um, conferences again. So um, I'm going to be talking about the aesthetic e ecosystem where how to keep the patients coming um, keep, and meeting all of their needs and your practice. So if you don't have those services, somebody else, because you don't want your patient to think that all you do is a tummy tuck. Because I, I had a, this story, I had a patient many years ago when I, in my earlier career as a, as a new brand new surgeon, of course, we're doing breast reduction mm -hmm. and insurance when you first come out, that's what you had to do. So a patient comes back postoperatively after breast reduction and ask me, me, do I know a plastic surgeon that does liposuction? Right. They, don't, they don't see you as anything but what they saw you as when they it, started. It, it doesn't can. even dawn on them that you, wow, you're actually a plastic surgeon and can do cosmetic as well. Yeah. yeah. So that was the key moment for me. Mm -hmm. And I, I had to, I, I still remember that. And I, I don't remember who that patient was, but I thank her for opening my eyes. She, and I was like, wow. So all she saw me was the breast reduction surgeon and she was looking for a plastic surgeon. And that was, that was the key moment. So I think um, non-surgical is in. Medical spa services is definitely in. And I, I know a lot of my colleagues uh, may have been ignoring that, but there's a lot of resources. There's, you can literally generate a lot of revenue to run your practice from the non-surgical practice. Well, I know most surgeons are not getting all the disposable income of a patient. Um, most patients, they have their, um, their go-to for Botox because they can get in and out quickly, or they love this one injector, so they put some money over there at another place, or they love their plastic surgeon for the bigger ticket items, but I guarantee you're never getting all, all the resources unless you're paying attention to it, you know, unless you're really developing that relationship and they know that you are the one-stop shop. You've got to be the umbrella in today's world. Um, it's just getting too expensive not to be. As a matter of fact, I'd love to talk about marketing now because you are an excellent marketer. Um, and one thing, I don't know if everyone's watching the video, but you have to go to YouTube later and watch the video. Dr. Ocaro is very, very well known as the bow tie doctor. And ever since, do you sleep in bow ties as well? <laughs> because, and, because I've never, ever seen you without a bow tie. You must have a lot of them because I've never seen the same one twice. And you even have one for surgery when you're wearing your scrubs. So what a great differentiator. So tell me the story about, did you, were you born with a bow tie or how did all that happen? Well, I, it's a long story, uh, but I'm going to make it short. Um, I was doing surgery at my, our center one time and then uh, a patient um, bought me a bow tie if I could wear her favorite color. And that changed everything. And she thought I would look good on a bow tie. So I started wearing bow tie in surgery. I remember the first time I wore bow tie in surgery, it was, people were like, whoa, what's going on? So I figured, hey, give him something to talk about as long as it's not negative. Right. And uh, people started branding, branding me the bow tie plastic surgeon. And patients loved it. So they were, the reason why I have so many bow tie is Patients bring me bow ties for their surgery, their favorite colors. I have every color. I have different, I have both. Oh my God. I, I, I didn't know you were gonna ask. So I have a, this, this, this is a turkey bow tie. I have bow tie everywhere. I have bow tie in my bag, in my car, everywhere. I have bow ties everywhere. So I don't sleep on, with my bow tie though, but I love, and I can, I tie my bow tie without even looking at me. I can close my, 
my eyes and tie a bow tie. That's how good is it now. Oh, they're the real bow ties. I thought they would be clip on. That would be mm -hmm. the only one I could deal with. And you're a very dapper dresser. So most of the time it's very color coordinated with your handkerchief in the pocket. Um, I remember being in a meeting and it was just a sea of suits, you know, because you guys are always dressed up with suits. You stood out like a, not a sore thumb, you stood out like a, a, a guiding light because you had a bow tie on. I thought that's genius, you know, because you're wow. you differentiate yourself. Yeah. yeah my, my dad always, he always says, dress for, dress for the job that you want, not the one you have. So wow. uh, he's always also told me that to dress well and people will treat you based on how you dress. So I, I took that to heart. So I always try to, um, to do my best. Thank you for noticing. I appreciate it. Oh yeah, no, big time. Um, you've also done a super good job on social media and it's also your demographics. It seems like you trend to the younger girl, like the body work, and it's just a different demographic, like versus let's say the older, more mature woman who wants facial rejuvenation, which you do, but it's just, you've done, um, I think you've got 59,000 followers on Instagram and you're really good about doing Facebook live, Instagram live. So um, I'm sure that didn't come natural to you, but do you have any suggestions for how you get comfortable in front of the camera and how do you attract so many patients to your practice? So we, we have a social practice. So at, we've, we've defined our practice as a social practice where, um, so this is the secret, okay? One, you, get, you need to hire, if you can afford it, hire a public or social media coordinator. Mm -hmm. Their job is to handle all, your, all of your social media. So that's what we did. And then make sure that your staff, your team are on the same page. Everyone must be comfortable with social media. Mm -hmm. All of our staff, when they're hired, have to sign a consent for social media. Huh. So at any given moment, the social media person can do a video. We don't have to worry, worry about that. The patients who are on social media, of course, we, they ha you have to get a consent for social media for the patients. Mm -hmm. So the same consent for a patient, the same consent for our employees upon hiring. So the success, uh, we don't have millions of followers, but we do have real followers. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we is done by our social media coordinator. I do my best. I'm not a social media wizard by any chance, but I do my best to keep it real. Well, you know how I can tell they like you. When I go over your Instagram posts, you'll stand in front of like, let's say uh, a video screen talking about uh, why you don't want to gain weight before uh, liposuction. I thought that was fascinating. And so did 8,000 other people, you know? Um, it, the doctors, the surgeons have a tendency to get in their own way and say, I'm not an actor, I'm not interesting. You're fascinating. To a patient who wants body work and you're, you're explaining it to them, I thought that video was amazing. I'm never going to forget that because I also thought, and I know better, that you should gain weight before before lipo because you'll get rid of it. And you were like, no, you're good. Anyway, that was excellent. Really, really yes. good. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, I, I think the thing is when some people are shy on a, on a, a camera, um, just think of it as if you're talking to the pa one patient, not 10,000. You're talking to one person. And you want that person to listen to you. Um, I learned that skill when we were doing some commercials in Atlanta, Georgia on the TV, live TV. So just, just talk to the person who's doing the video and don't, don't worry about the, the video. Do your, do your best, keep it natural. Um, that's, that's what we do for social media. Um, we, we, it's all in-house. We do it all in-house. Um, we have our own social media coordinator. She do a great job. And my staff contribute. Um, Dr. Park does social media, or even our peers have their own videos and have their own channels. Um, how did you get Nini? Is that her name? Nini, <laughs> yes. The housewife of Atlanta, I believe. Yes. Um, yes. I, I mean, she gave you some killer videos and uh, uh, just somebody like that, if you can get a housewife in your town, um, you're golden. Um, did that make a huge difference or by then you were already... A big um, I, it's, it's hard to tell because that's a, a more recent relationship. Um, I don't know what happened, but 
um, all of the housewives in Atlanta, all of a sudden started coming to Georgia plastic. So we do have a lot of uh, celebrities. I mean, Atlanta is, is, um, is, uh, is becoming popular in the um, movie industry. So a lot of uh, c celebrities come to us. Um, so we're used to that. Um, uh, we thank Nini Kim and uh, wanted to be part of the movement, I guess. And then uh, we, 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 we are happy for her, her relationship. Um, so I, there, there's more to come from that, I, I think. That was that's golden. So regarding marketing, you it sounds like you've tried all sorts of things. You, you it sounds like you did some TV, you did some commercials. Um, I'm sure you did print or, you know, all whatever radio, all of that. What what used to work that no longer does, and what's working now that surprises you? I know if, I, I know yellow pages don't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. <laughs> so you're right. We did yellow pages. We we. Um, we did a little bit of print magazine. It didn't work. That that doesn't work. There's no return investment on, on, on magazines uh, most of the time. If it works for you and continues to work for you, that's great. But I think um, we did TV and we did radio. Um, those are hit and miss. Um, at, the, at the end of the day, I think with all of that stuff, I would probably say uh, social media is the most effective right now. Social media is literally the old fashioned, new school water mouth. You know what I mean? So the old water mouth is not social media. That's what that is. Okay. So that's the most effective part of, of, of marketing that we use right now. But there is no marketing greater than that personal referral from another patient. You can't be that. So every patient that comes to the practice is all about their personal experience. Because I know when they have a great experience, either they're coming back or their friends and family is coming to us. So like yesterday, I did a husband and wife mm -hmm. together. You know, that's separate time, but the same day. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we do like sisters and friends, but um, but that's the best, best referral in terms of returning investment is the word amount followed by social media. Um, and of course the, you know, influencers are fine, um, for the, the people that follow them, you know, so well, I think you have to have a good website as well for, because people end up looking at your website and see what's going on. Oh, that's a really good um, conduit to your website. I noticed, and this is very controversial, to put your prices online. And you're very transparent. And you literally have the price list right there for everyone to see. And the smart thing I think you did, because I'm also not sure, I don't like when this whole industry gets down to price. I don't love that. I, if we commoditize this then anybody can do anything. And that's not true. You know, you're surgeons, you're not, there's a big difference between a surgeon and a nurse. <laughs> Just yes. um, So I sometimes worry about that, but the way you did it, you did it in ranges. They're very realistic ranges. So when you say something, a body part, it's like five to 9,000. So you give yourself lots of room there, but you also, and I love this part, you also say what's included and you include everything. Nothing pisses off a patient more than this add-on stuff, you know, like oh they, thought it, God. they thought mm -hmm. it was going to be 5,000. Now you went over in surgery. Now the garments, now the meds, now the ba 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 And it's like, would you just give me a free answer? <laughs> so so um, when did you put that, prices on your website and how much did that change your lead generation process? So I want to talk about lead generation last, okay. but the price thing is, so, you know, we go on vacation, you go, you go in a hotel, you pay for internet, you pay for that stuff, or you go to another vacation in the Caribbean, it's an all-inclusive, everything's included. I came back, I said, why can't we have, be the all-inclusive plastic surgery? So we made a switch. And what happened was our prices, all of a sudden looked higher than everybody else. Mm -hmm. So we were worried about that for a while, but then people start to understand, oh, you just paid price and you don't have to bring your wallet when you come for your post-op, everything's included mm -hmm. and it made it and then 
people will find it, they got it. Like you pay one, you come, you pay one price. So we call it the all-inclusive plastic surgery service. You pay one price, includes your, your surgery, pre, post, uh, post-op intercare, inter-op, post-op care, and everything else. So you just come to the practice and then we made unlimited visits, like unlimited, literally. You can come to the practice anytime you want, but we have scheduled appointment, but if you want more, you can come, there's no charge for anything. So um, it becomes, actually it's more profitable because people are more comfortable with you and they refer their patients. You're not gonna lose money. You actually, it's peace of mind for the patient as well. And we also include a cosmetic show for them to give them peace of mind if there's any complications. So it's a total peace of mind. I think it's in one of your talks, mm -hmm. make it easy for the patient to book. I listen to your talk a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Absolutely. And do not charge them more than they're expecting to pay. Um, so many competitors of yours will charge extra when they go over in surgery. And I get it, but the patient doesn't. They don't, under, they don't care if you go over. <laughs> you, they, you told them it was gonna take four hours. They don't care if it took five hours, that's on you. And I just think in today's world, you have to be so careful with pricing and be transparent. I love, I love that you said all in one because it's really important that you put those two together. You have the, the ranges, but then right under it, you say, and these are all inclusive. That was the important part because they'll go on other consultations and that's when they start asking, oh, so does, does this include this? And they're, oh, well, no, that would be extra. And that's where it's like, oh, I get it. I'm going to stay with Georgia Plastic. They're being a lot more forthright about it. Yeah. Um, did you notice though that you got more calls from it or that your conversion rates were better when you were more transparent? Is the conversion rate when they're coming into the office? Because, you know, typically the average patient we would have done two or three consults with for, before they come see us. As a matter of fact, when they call us and they haven't been to other places, we encourage them to go to other places and come back to us. The reason is we know when they go to other places, they will notice the difference. First of all, the way we answer our phone is very unique. We are, our office answers the phone very unique. And when they come to us, they feel more relaxed. We saw, so we have a very transparent practice. So they see everything that they're paying for. Everything is itemized. There's no, you know exactly. And the, the final number, that's it. There's no more fee. And if, if we go over, over in surgery in our surgery center, which we, we are right, you know, after so many years of surgery, you know how long a tummy tuck is going to take you. Either you go over a little bit, but it's fine. Even if we go over, we don't charge them extra. Right. So it's peace of mind. Plus, mm -hmm. I mean, I like the fact that it's just peace of mind. Mm -hmm. I think it's the, the key there. Well, it also came out in your reviews. If you read your reviews, they comment on it all the time. They say um, his prices are very reasonable and there were no surprises. So, I mean, listen to the patients. They, they like that kind of thing. That's what I think you're doing differently. You're actually listening to the patients and giving them what they want. Um, but, you know, the, some of the patients, your demographic can be tough. Number one, you usually have, there could be a BMI issue. Um, what's, your, what's your max? Wow, you touched a sore subject there. <laughs> well, I'm in Georgia. Yeah. Um, and we love Georgia. The um, food's fantastic. I couldn't live there. Yeah, I, I, I need to be in California. I stay a lot skinnier in California. <laughs> I know, you guys are a little skinny. We, we have Georgia peaches and we love them. They're good. Georgia's great, but um, we have to cut off at some point. So my BMI cut off is 40. 40 BMI, you gotta be below 40 BMI. We try to keep it at 35, but sometimes, you know, 30, 36, okay, you start cutting corners, but there's a hard cut off at 40. If you get close to 40, we do work with some weight loss doctors around their practice to help them get down to a, um, <clears throat> we call it life, you know, plastic surgery for life, because um, we talk about fat a lot in Georgia. And uh, what we do try and make them is, is not just the liposuction. Uh, we want you to change your lifestyle. The average patient that comes to our practice that has liposuction or does something else, breast lift or tummy tuck, we always talk about fat. We always talk to them about lifestyle changes and the average patient and they end up losing weight after they meet us. And um, we've documented that many times um, and they tell us that all the time. 
You know what I would recommend? If you do need somebody to lose weight before you'll do surgery on them, I would at least give them a page of resources to help them. Um, even if you gave them, you know, there's a simple mobile app, something like lost it or lose it or something. I, it's like, um, it's, it really holds you accountable for what you're eating. Just something like that to help them because there's nothing more frustrating than telling a patient, well, come back when you've lost 30 pounds. No, no, that, that doesn't happen at yeah. all. Um, no, we, we, we do have, a, um, some, uh, for our colleagues who, uh, who have practices around that practice. So we actually refer them to a weight loss doctor. Oh, good. Yeah, we have, they're given a, a, a referral to go see the person mm -hmm. and they call me, we have both medical weight loss and surgical weight loss, not in the practice, but people that we, we've known for years that do a good job. A lot, a lot of our, our patients go there and they come back to us. And sometimes those doctors refer patients, so it becomes a referral source as well. So the patients that that gone to them directly lose weight and they have loose skin, they refer. So it, it's a win-win situation. That's fantastic. We give them business, they give us business. So it works well. Mm -hmm. um, regarding uh, marketing, you're also a very good, I think you do such a good job with patient education. I know you wrote a book on the Brazilian buttock lift. We all call it the BBL. Yes. But, yeah. Um, yeah. How has that helped you position yourself as a specialist? So as, as you know, that is in the world of marketing, that's called authoritative marketing. Mm -hmm. So um, the, when a patient goes to Amazon, uh, they, they find my book. I mean, I become the expert. So if you, if you can write a book, that makes you the expert in that topic, period. So like that book is the only book on Amazon on Brazilian Butler for patients, not for doctors. I wrote it right. for patients, not for doctors. Mm -hmm. And because I noticed that there was nothing in there for them. So the book was basically written to educate them before surgery and answer all of the questions that uh, we normally get in, in the practice. So that book has really um, helped. It's really helped position us as the and the expert, at least in the, at, the Atlanta metro area. Um, when we travel overseas, people will get the book and sometimes people will show me the book during the consultation. Mm -hmm. You know, I give a little bit of discount to kind of get them going, so it's good. Um, the secret there is to write about one body part, one procedure, one body part. Um, too many surgeons miss that and they just talk about what they do and they become the jack of all trades and um, and we can do this and we can, um, I, the, I would actually have a series and it's not about having a 300 page book. It's about having FAQs with really killer before and after photos, call it a day, get it on Amazon. It helps your SEO so much, especially, I don't know if you've heard about all the privacy issues going on um, where um, Apple and Google and Facebook are fighting about uh, data. No one's going to share data anymore. That's and right. they're also being sued a lot for it from the government. So there's a self-serving aspect to this, but also just for self-preservation. You know, um, privacy is, uh, is in. And it's a big deal. It, yeah, data sharing is out. So get, guess what they're saying? SEO is back in again <laughs> because um, the other channels are getting strangled. Uh, so you can't uh, target like you used to be able to. That so now, the, now the, the ball went back over to SEO and now they want organic. So you've done a great job with content, content. Um, but I love that you just picked one body part. Good for you. Yeah. So we are, that, that book is uh, part one. We are working on the second one now. Um, nice. I wanted to talk about lead generation. This sure. is something that um, I don't know if you notice on the website is different for our website. Mm -hmm. We, I think the whole industry I'm going out on a limb here, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I think I can talk about it because I have a, I've had a, a, a year and a half experience watching this. So we changed the whole lead generation uh, pathway. We no longer collect leads in our practice. You do not? We do not. What do you and mean? So when you go to my website, Mm -hmm. the only lead that you may collect is when we have a chat that if you want to chat, you can collect the lead that way. Right. But we don't allow people to leave leads on a website because we've gone to part that like, it was so, we, we had, my, my team told me that they're tired of chasing down leads. Uh -huh. 
So we, I thought about it to say, what if we chase, well, what if they chase us? Mm-hmm. Let's turn the table. So I did an experiment a year and a half ago. It was a bit, because I knew I was fully booked, so I could, I had some room to play. Right. So we remo- removed the lead. They give you your name, your phone number, email, we'll call you. My office was spending hours and hours calling people that are not really interested. Mm-hmm. So we, we changed it. I'm going to be talking about it in, in, in the upcoming um, session, but I'm going to give you a hint. So what we did was patients can put the information, they can send it. If you come to us and you want to consult us, we give so much information on the website. By the time you finish that stuff, hopefully we'll answer all your questions. We don't want to chase you. If you're serious, pay for the consultation online. We, we only get the lead when they pay for consultation and then we'll call them and give them a date and time. So we, uh, uh, about a year and a half, we stopped collecting leads and the ones that come through are the ones that are serious. Mm-hmm. So now that has helped me manage our, pay, our staff time. We're no longer chasing ghosts. So I think our industry really, really need to rethink how we do. I know it's been good. I really don't like the word lead generation. It's great. But if you talk to a lot of plastic surgeons, they really have a problem chasing down people. It's, it's really, it takes a lot of time. You can have 10 leads and only one will answer their phone. So my, my team was getting frustrated, so we had to do something. So what are your thoughts about that? Something new, we have had it for a year and a half and it's working for us. I agree with you with um, the leads have gotten questionable with the quality because of just the way things are in today's world. The internet is fairly, it's a flaky group of people. It's the public and you have no idea what stage they're at. Um, you're, you're following somebody who doesn't even remember they called you or, or, or right. into a form. They don't even know what you're talking about. And, um, and you're chasing them for sure. I would automate quite a bit of that. Here's where the problem comes in. You surgeons want to be busy. You want that phone ringing. You want your reception area full. And that's why quality and quantity get mixed up. You know, um, you get this false sense of um, safety when, when you have quantity. The, the issue in today's world is what is that quantity costing you in terms of staff overtime, staff frustration, staff turnover? Because there's nothing worse. I used to be in outside sales forever. I used to, you know, knock on doors for like 12 years. And God, it's exhausting. If, you, if you're not good with that and, and you don't like rejection, um, most people don't. So that's where the problem comes in. So I love automating a lot more of this. And I think you're doing great with that, especially your conversion rate must be killer. If they're plopping down the 150 consoles be- It's uh, 250 time. down. It's oh. gone for 250. <laughs> good for you. And what's your conversion rate? Um, what, so that's a, that's a great question. So um, since it's so funny, when we increase the um, consultation fee, my conversion rate went up as well. It seems so paradoxical, but it's crazy. It's totally crazy because so my so we have almost I don't want to say zero no show because if we have a no show for consult, it's usually from something happened because they've already paid two fifty, mm-hmm. right? So my no show rate is less than I want to say three percent or less than that. We. When somebody pays two fifty for a virtual consult, by the way, virtual. Oh wow! Majority of our consults now are virtual, mm-hmm. so you know we made the flip last year. But we were doing consults for our international. We were doing virtual consults for our international patients even before the pandemic. So when pandemic hit, it was easy for us to just go almost virtual. So two fifty, and there's no show. There's literally zero no show. Mm-hmm. Um, conversion rate for me is between 60 and 75 percent nice. and the ones the ones that don't book now mm-hmm. what so I do call them back when uh, somebody called them back why mm-hmm. the single most reason that they don't call they don't book is they can't afford it because it's we are more expensive than the other plastic surgeon mm-hmm. 
Um, I love what you're doing, but this is not for the faint of heart. And you do not want to do this until you have a very good name and reputation in your, you. in your area and you have a nice following and, and you're out there because you have not been hiding. You've been on, on Instagram and Facebook and you're doing live and you're doing so much content. Um, and so that's why I think the patients are feeling comfortable enough. Like, don't they feel like they know you already when you meet yes. them? Yes. So like the, the funny thing is sometimes I walk in the exam room, they think I'm a celebrity. Totally. They want your autograph. Yeah. Yes. So I know I'm not a, plastic, plastic surgeons are not celebrities, but they feel like they've been watching you on TV or mm -hmm. Instagram or whatever. They feel like they know you. So I, mean, I, 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 I think we are using the, the social proof to our, our advantage. Um, I, I agree with what you said. Uh, you have to also look at your, your environment. Um, we've always charged consult fee um, and increasing the consult fee. We had room. I, I did it. And so we did it because we felt comfortable. We have enough room to make some adjustments. Whenever we do that, we, so like when we did it, I was booked six months ahead of time. So mm -hmm. even if no, the phone wasn't ringing, we had rooms that make some adjustments. So, but my team are very happy. They don't have to call people anymore yep. and get done. You know, you know how it, you said it, you, you doing those calls. They were happy that when it came to work in the morning, there's an email of patients who have already paid for consultation. All they have to do is call them to give them dates. Mm -hmm. The money is in the practice. And, the, and then we had less, so we decreased the quantity, but we increased the quality of, of the patients. So that, that was a game changer for us. Mm -hmm what what made you do that like are you reading something or you have mentors i know you have you had me as a consultant so i gave you a few ideas um where are you getting all of this because this is very unusual for a surgeon to think like you do um, where are you getting that growth mindset well i mean thanks to you i um i um watch a lot of your videos you're very intelligent you're very smart you get this industry I, I, I think you give a lot of information. Um, I, I, you are my consultant uh, we've hired in the past. So a lot of information from you and you continue to feed us with information, but I also travel a lot. Mm -hmm. I speak with other consultants as well. Um, um, like I told you, I was born into business. Mm -hmm. I was the only person in my family who went to medicine. So, uh, and plus I told you, I mean, I'm in school now for MBA, right? <laughs> wow, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. So I am getting my MBA um, next year from University of Georgia. Um, so that helped a lot. Um, I think it's a combination of everything and um, just having the vision. And I, we asked our um, internet uh, provider, not internet, our website people how to do it, they, walk, they walked us through that. Um, um, sh a little shout out to um, Crystal Clear. Um, they did help, help us um, design that and it has worked out for us so far. And I love it. I don't think I'm gonna go back to lead, lead generation. I, I, I think for me, I think I'm gonna promote that a lot. Mm -hmm. Let me just say, because I think it really changed it was a game changer for us. I actually, it was a game changer. Um, there's nothing like being at home, looking at your email, mm -hmm. and getting the emails come. We use PayPal, no financial interest there, but um, getting the uh, seeing that people are paying while you are home and sleeping, or it's just every. Almost every hour, I get an alert from email from PayPal that somebody just paid two fifty. I mean, you can't be, on a Friday night. People on my website, there's nobody answering the phone. I mean, can you beat that? No, that's why uh, their internet marketing is so interesting. <clears throat> that's why I came into it because 
They said you could sit on the beach. I'm a redhead, so I don't sit on the beach. But they said you can just have um, things on the web and then you just look at your email and you watch the, the money come in. And I thought, really? Is that true? And it, and it is. It, but a lot goes into that. That doesn't just happen by magic. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's what's happening now. So when they come to work on Monday, they will mm -hmm. call all the people that paid for consultation the whole weekend. Yep. And our schedule is full. I mean, those that, so those that don't want to pay, you can see incomplete transactions, those that call during working hours. That's where my, my, my team have to work to convert those. But so we, we don't collect, we don't chase you, they chase us. That's the key I was trying to tell. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. I know your website, if anyone wants to get to know you better, your website is georgiaplastic.com. Yes. And do you have any tips or any last words of, of encouragement to the surgeons out there? I, I think, um, yes. Yeah. So I think um, surgeons like, like me, we need to get consultants like you who've been in the business for a long time get advice you can't do by yourself and having a website is more it's not enough you need to work on it i do um write the contents of my website i add content so if you're new at this i'll would, I would add the content every week every month something we'll work with your your, your website provider work with a consultant go to meetings expose yourself to business the business of plastic surgery is more, more than just being a good surgeon. You have to know how to market yourself. So that's what, what I've done. I've learned as much now. I dive into business school to take it to the next level. Well, you've done a great job of that. And as you can see from the sign behind him, it says the best dad. So he's also the best dad to four kids. He has a lovely wife, a beautiful practice. Dr. Okoro, you are kicking it. Good for you. Yeah. Thank you very much for your help. I, I appreciate you so much. Sure. And I hope to see you in a meeting someday. Every time I'm planned, I've, tr I've planned one, they go virtual. So I'm hoping, um, I, I'm hoping to see you next year, I guess. So yeah, we, we uh, stay safe. I hope to see you soon. Absolutely. And that is it for us on this episode of Beauty and the Biz. If you haven't already, please go to Beauty and the Biz and subscribe on iTunes or all the others. And if you've got any questions or feedback for myself or for Dr. Okoro, just leave them on my website at katherinemaley.com or feel free to DM me at MBA on Instagram. Take care and we'll talk again soon.